Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and Module 8 on Applying Chemical Ideas. This is video number 5 and we're going to be looking once again at gravimetric analysis. Now it probably feels like we've come back to this whole idea of gravimetric analysis over and over again and in fact we have. Um, this is a way of turning some of our qualitative analyses that we've previously looked at in terms of identifying different ions in solution to actually identifying how much of those ions are present in solution. And of course, once we get an analytical technique which has a quantitative component to it, we need a different type of test. And that's what our gravimetric analysis is going to give us. So really, this, this sort of procedure can be carried out for any um, of the ions that we've looked at. And you can, and a gravimetric analysis is simply about trying to find the mass of a particular um, precipitate and then to infer from that uh, mass how much of a particular ion that we have present. Um, so what um, we've done previously and I think what is uh, appropriate to address this particular um, concept is to look at the fact that a lot of the fertilizers that we use contain sulfates. I think we can try and quantitatively analyze the amount of sulfates that are present in particular uh, fertilizers, often because they'll be in quite a simple form. So, for example, um, ammonium sulfate or sulfate of ammonia is the, one of the most common types of fertilizers and has the formula NH4, two of these with an SO4, and this is our ammonium sulfate. So what we can do with this is if we're able to um, withdraw the sulfate from the solution, we can get a sense of the uh, actual amount of ammonium sulfate that there was in the uh, original fertilizer. It's a good qualitative, uh, sorry, it's a good quantitative control measure. And obviously with uh, chemical industries where they're adding certain types of products or creating certain types of products, part of the quality assurance is to make sure that they have that minimum amount that they say they do um, in each of their products. So quantitative analysis is a very important uh, type of tool and can help us um, to sort of, I guess, get a bit of a sense of how uh, accurate, how valid uh, our techniques are in terms of how close an agreement we can get between values that we calculate experimentally and values that we may calculate by looking at an ingredients list on um, something uh, theoretically of what, what they say that it should be. So that's our kind of context. Let's have a look at this procedure in a little more detail. So here's a basic overview of the procedure. What we obviously want to do is weigh our sample of fertilizer. The whole point with ammonium sulfate, ammonium um, is one of our important nag sags and ammonium salts are soluble. So that means we should be able to throw all of our weighed sample into a beaker of water and it should all dissolve. What we then want to do is to add a suitable substance to form a precipitate. So if in this case what we're trying to do is analyze for the amount of sulfate ions that are present, then what we might do is add something like barium nitrate. It doesn't actually matter how much of this we add. In fact, what we want to often do is add excess because it doesn't matter if there's lots of nitrates, we don't care about that. It doesn't matter if there's lots of barium ions in the solution, we don't care about that. What we do want to do is make sure that all of the sulfate is precipitated as barium sulfate. So we want all the sulfate ions to come out of the solution and we want them all to precipitate so we can recover them. The way we do this can affect the um, quality and the precision and also, um, very importantly, the accuracy of our um, final values. The other problem that we have with um, barium sulfate is it can be very fine and therefore um, normal filtration methods that we use often don't work particularly well so um, we change those procedures up a little bit and the diagram that you can see um, has a vacuum usually it'll have a vacuum tube which is withdrawing um, air kind of uh, creating a suction effect that's pulling that um, 
solution or that filtrate through quicker. Um, also, what we find is we often use a sintered glass. It's a more expensive type of filter. Um, and that means that it's uh, a much more high precision type of technique. We're less likely to get a lot of our precipitate actually passing through the filter paper and um, ending up in a filtrate. So there's a few slight differences to the way that we carry out this procedure in order to try and increase the accuracy and therefore the validity. What we want to do obviously is then dry the sample. We don't want to be weighing it wet because then we'll have a mass of water as well as our massive precipitate. So we want to make sure that it's nice and dry and then we'll weigh that to give us a massive precipitate. Then we can just work backwards. When we're analysing the results of this particular experiment, there are a few factors that can actually affect the validity of these results. Remember, of course, that we do have a theoretical value which uh, we can obtain from the source. So if we were testing a particular type of fertiliser, it should actually tell us how much um, sulphate we would expect to get or at least maybe how much ammonium sulfate we would expect in that fertilizer. So therefore, we've got a value that we can use for, for comparing against our empirical or experimental results. What we often find is that there may not be um, a tight level of agreement between our experimental value and our theoretical value, and that can be affected by a number of different factors. So firstly, what we have to assume is that only sulphate ions are being precipitated. So when we add our barium ions, we need to make sure that they are precipitating all and only um, sulphate ions out of the solution. I mentioned that the barium sulfate can be very fine, so we want to make sure that all of that precipitate is being collected so that when we have our final weight, that, that mass of barium sulfate that we have at the end does represent the um, all of the um, sulfate ions that were present in the solution to begin with. The, the way that we carry out our filtration process does affect the validity of the results and how um, consistently we can get to our answers, which which um, enters into the realms of reliability as well, is that if we carry out this procedure with very fine analytical grade filter paper, or uh, we use something like a sintered glass filter, then we are filtering with much higher levels of accuracy than what we did before. Of course, you also want to be aware of things like reliability. And reliability is obviously related to um, repetition. We want to make sure that repetition occurs several times and making sure that we have, of course, consistency as well as our um, repetition. So there's a couple of um, uh, there's a couple of other things I haven't mentioned. Things like oh, I did previously mention things like making sure our precipitate is fully dry, it's not still damp. That can that extra water can affect the mass and therefore our results. Even if some of that is in the filter paper and you're sort of comparing wet filter paper plus the precipitate with dry filter paper before we put the um, precipitate on there, each of these things can actually affect the accuracy. Um, and therefore the validity of our results. So this is quite a useful process. Obviously, it is about getting numbers, which means there's going to be a chemical equations, which means there's going to be a little bit of stoichiometry as well as you use those numbers to calculate the um, amount of barium that you could expect in the sample to begin with. But this is one of these interesting techniques quantitative techniques that allows us to get to exactly how much sulfate or of any other particular iron is present in a solution. Thanks for watching.